Hello and welcome once again to another retro review. We're continuing our journey through the year 2002 and what a year for wrestling this was. Exactly 20 years ago on this day, November 17th, we saw the inauguration of one of the greatest match types of the modern era. The Elimination Chamber, a match so brutal, so nasty, that they made it much safer and made a pay-per-view out of it. A yearly pay-per-view. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, it was a joint pay-per-view between, obviously, the two brands, Raw and SmackDown, that split earlier on this year. It took place on the 17th of November, which I've already mentioned, 2002. And it was from New York, New York, and the Madison Square Garden was the venue. Where else could you do a first in wrestling other than the home of WWE, the spiritual home of WWE before the Performance Center? They don't go back there very much anymore. They do the occasional show, but um, it's quite sad, really, because it's just not big enough to hold a pay-per-view anymore obviously that's why they do big stadiums and stuff now um 17,930 people were on hand in madison square garden like i say it's just not big enough anymore with a hundred thousand plus going to wrestlemania um it is obviously on the wwe network on demand it's uh, approximate running time is three hours. The theme song is always by Saliva when they were one of WWE's favourite bands, along with Limp Bizkit and uh, others, shall we say. P.O.D. as well uh, came into, into fruition around this time. Anyway, uh, the arena can be found in the video games. WWE 2K15, Smackdown, Here Comes the Pain, and Raw 2. Um, and uh, yeah, this one has got some really interesting matches in it, some really good matches in it, and it obviously culminates with the Elimination Chamber, uh, one of my favourite match types, and it's... Hard to say that there is any other Elimination Chamber that's as good as the first one. It had everything. Uh, and of course, being the first, it wasn't quite as big. It was a bit less forgiving when it came to it. Um, and just made the whole thing much better, shall we say, without it being horrid. Um yeah, so let's get on with the main part of the pay-per-view, and uh, I hope you join me there. You can join me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. Leave us a comment down below. What's your favourite Survivor Series? Obviously, obviously, it's coming up very soon this year, um, at the end of the month, as we speak. So this is a good time to put out this video. Going straight into the first match then it is a six man elimination table tag team match where the winning team will put their opponents, all three of their opponents through a table individually obviously um so yeah it is the dudley boys with jeff hardy and it is three minute warning with rico um i say the dudley boys it is spike dudley and bubba ray dudley um in this one so not quite the dudley boys but a shell of Dudley Boys um, as far as we know them in WWE at this time uh, that being said Spike Dudley is pretty damn 
awesome. However, he goes out first. He is the first elimination. Um, it is followed closely by um, <clears throat> the two members of Three Minute Warning. And, of course, then it's uh, Jeff Hardy goes out as well, leaving uh, Rico and Bubba Ray left in the ring uh, to finish this one off. Three minute warning, come back down. Obviously, there's no disqualifications in this match. So having an elimination rule in a match like this kind of defeats the point anyway. Um, at the time, <laughs> I was really looking forward to this. I seem to remember really looking forward to this. But watching it back now... Um, yeah, they kind of start. They kind of. I'm guessing. I mean, it made sense that they want to start on a massive high point uh, with the tables match and sort of get it out of the way. Um, Jeff Hardy does the big dive off the um, off of one of the uh, entrance entrance ways to Madison Square Garden. He's got several dotted round, including the one that the wrestlers come out of. And uh, so that's that's your big high spot in this one. Obviously, fighting in, fighting in the crowd, that's always a good spot, isn't it? And uh, yeah, it would be uh, Bubba Ray picking up the victory after a surprise appearance from Devon, who made a run in and took out three minute warning and helped Bubba Ray win with the three D through the table on Rico. Um, so yeah, a bit of a throwaway. Like I say, there's no. Um, it's sad, really, because the tables match. Bloody brilliant, yeah? Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one, but it doesn't quite hit the high points that you would expect from a tables match, sadly. Um, I'm going to give it two cheap shots out of five based on the fact that there was one big high spot and Devon came back and reformed the Dudley boys for uh, a big pop. Uh, in this one so yeah two cheap shots out of five for this one um speaking of the dudley boys we go to the world in new york because it's no longer wwf new york um it is the world um still still the same principle it's a restaurant come uh, come bar and, and obviously they play the pay-per-views in there i bet it was a really cool atmosphere actually to be fair uh right in the heart of Times square um stacy keebler is there so the jobber that is at wwe the world uh, survivor series 2002 was stacy keebler and the other jobbers that were there were saliva singing the song for this uh, pay-per-view always yes and we move on to the next match next we go into what i would consider one of the best matches of the night it is for the cruiserweight championship and the two combatants in this match are brilliant they've had an epic feud up to this point and this is just the crescendo the icing the cherry on top of the cake whatever you want to call it it is jamie noble with nidia defending his cruiserweight championship against billy kidman um been chasing the title for a couple of months now these two have tremendous chemistry together um and you can really tell throughout their series of matches that they've had including ones with Rey Mysterio, Tajiri and all that kind of all those kind of people the people that you'd expect to be in the cruiserweight division now the cruiserweight division is exclusive to Smackdown at this point in time and it is epic it is really really good it really exploded and um, it's everything that the newer cruiserweight division wanted to be but sadly that died very quickly um so yeah this match is wow it's just it's so good it's so quick it's so heavily paced um kidman has more of the high flying cruiserweight style that you'd expect whereas jamie noble is a striker with his finishing move and very devastating finishing move for the past five months that he's been champion 
the Tiger Bomb. Um, but Billy Kidman would pick up the win here with um, his more high-flying style. He was on top of Jamie Noble straight away, uh, jumping off the top rope to the outside and uh, hitting high drop kicks and, and lots of flying moves to take down the champ on his offense, which he didn't get very much of it in. It does finish with uh, what would be considered as one of the most beautiful moves in wrestling, the student star press. As Taz says on commentary, it's a really pretty move until it lands. And this time it landed well, it landed hard, and it got Billy Kidman the one, two, three for the win. We have a new cruiserweight champion in the WWE in SmackDown on this night, on the 17th of November at Survivor Series. Um, really well deserved. I'm going to give this match three and a half cheap shots out of five because it's a really good match. We go on to another backstage segment now. It is Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle in the back. Uh, Kurt Angle's watching the TV as they do. It's not even a flat screen TV at this point. It's a, a full tube TV, uh, a mini one as well. Uh, kind of one that you would have with a DVD player in it as well. Uh, I remember those. I had one when I was at uni. Anyway, uh, rambling. So uh, Kurt Angle says, did you look at that? Did you see that? If Billy Kidman can win the Cruiserweight Championships, then Championship, then we can win back the Tag Team Championships. Uh, Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle formed the a tag team at the demand, shall we say, of Stephanie McMahon. Uh, won the inaugural championship and defended it well. Lost the title. Uh, now they're going for it again. So... Uh, Chris Benoit says, what did you say? What did you say? He goes for a handshake. Kurt Angle says, no, tag team partners don't shake hands. They hug. And he goes in for the hug. Chris Benoit's face is an absolute picture. And uh, then we go on to Jericho preparing for the Elimination Chamber match. Uh, is he ready? Time will tell. So we roll on in Survivor Series 2002 with a hardcore match for the women's championship but before we get into that we get a an f view i think this is like a gtv thing for the modern era or as modern as you can get in 2002 which was 20 years ago today wow um victoria talking to herself in the mirror who is the prettiest diva of all and then she has an argument with herself smashes the mirror and rips the head of a trish stand-up cardboard cutout yeah she's having a bad day anyway we're going to the match uh there seem to be bins attached to the uh to to the uh, ring post because obviously women can't go on the ring and get their own weapons <laughs> like the men do well they end up doing that anyway um yeah not never quite understood why the bins were attached to the post but um yeah this match is pretty brutal and it, it does um serve as a reminder that this was a good turning point year for the divas um with victoria and, and tristratus um victoria tells the story of how they were both both models fitness models uh, and the WWE were interested in both of them, but uh, Trish got the got the go ahead. Uh, Victoria finally got there, and uh, yeah, she's been after Trish for quite some time. But like I say, this match is stiff. They do not pull anything, but of course, it is a hardcore match for women. So there's an ironing board. <laughs> I don't even know. I begin. Uh, an ironing board underneath the ring because it's a divas hardcore match. Uh, 
Anyway, let's not take away from the match. Um, it was really good. It was absolutely solid. It was, it was brutal. They used bins. They used bin lids. They used uh, Singapore canes. They used sweeping brushes. Again, um, quite apt because before the match, both JR and the King were calling Victoria a witch. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, so the... Finish comes uh, after both women got some really heavy offense in and, and a couple of moves that perhaps they weren't ready for. I think there was a turning point here where there was some stiff shots. So people, you know, the, the other combatant got the receipt, uh, so to speak. And uh, yeah, um, really good match i really enjoyed it i didn't think i was going to but victoria comes out with a a bloody nose uh there was no other blood to be seen in the match at all uh so you know that was a genuine thing um uh, she'd obviously been hit or done something and uh you know got the bloody nose uh victoria comes out the winner after going under the ring for a fire extinguisher uh, Trish goes out to try and stop her. Victoria sprays the fire extinguisher in Trish's face, and the wind comes with a suplex. A standard suplex. After all that, after all the beating, after the chit, well, the headshots, uh, the bins, the bin lids, the Singapore canes, the, even the ironing board. I can't imagine that was too nice on the back of Victoria when she went into that. Um, a suplex. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's nuts. Um, but I really enjoyed this match, and again, it's it's excellent. Three and a half cheap shots out of five. Well done, ladies. Really turning the corner here. Um, so we do have a new women's champion. I should point out as well. Um, and also. The classic case of the dubbed music for Victoria here, which I want to mention. Uh, we go into the back as uh, Booker T is getting ready. The second competitor that they've seen um, warming up for the Elimination Chamber match. Uh, the five-time, 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 five-time WCW champion has the chance to be the world's champion. Uh, it's basically the same title. It's just got WWE written on top of it. Anyway... Uh, we are going to move on to the next match as we come up to the almost the one hour mark of the near three hour show. So we move on to the next match, but before we do that, there is a couple of backstage segments. Eric Bischoff talking to the coach about how he has changed the face of professional wrestling with his new idea, the Elimination Chamber, and once again, outdone Stephanie McMahon. Not many people could argue with that. He did actually change the face of professional wrestling with this match. Um, it was the next huge match. And I don't think, apart from the Money in the Bank ladder match, that it's been outdone, to be honest with you. Um, because the War Games match is an idea from a previous company. So, yeah. Can't argue with him there, but he's unceremoniously interrupted by one of the participants in the next match. It is the big show, telling him that he made a mistake, trading him to SmackDown and to watch him as he walks away with the WWE Championship. We then cut away to the other participant in the next match, Brock Lesnar, the next big thing, the WWE Champion, where he's joined by Paul Heyman, who says that he is worried, that he wants to keep the title, and there's a lot of foreshadowing here. Uh, he doesn't think he can get him up with the broken rib. Uh, great story being told here with, uh, with the broken rib as well. And of course, Big Show being so big, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, gives the title to Brock Lesnar, and subsequently they head to the ring. Big Show out first, <clears throat> Brock Lesnar out next. This is for the WWE Championship, and it is exclusively SmackDown uh, in this one. So, 
um, yeah, like I say, lots of foreshadowing after the um, after the promo package and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and looking back at it now, they just gave away the uh, the match really. Um, but yeah, it was a quick match. Brock Lesnar on it early. They have a bit of a a bullhorn tussle to start with. Uh, Brock Lesnar does manage to get Big Show up for a side suplex and a German suplex. Um, eventually, the referee gets taken down, the assigned referee. Mike Kyoda gets taken down. And uh, Brock Lesnar comes in with the chair. Big Show punches the chair, which is quite impressive anyway. And uh, Lesnar eventually does get the hit on the head. Um so he gets him up for the F5, almost gets the pin as the second referee comes down. Lesnar looking rather shocked that he managed to do this and pulls the referee out. What's going off? What is going off? Pulls the referee out, clocks him, uh, tries to walk around the other side of the ring so Lesnar wouldn't pick up that uh, he'd done that, but he just looks down at the floor, at the referee, and looks over... Uh, Paul Heyman, and he puts two and two together and correctly makes four because there's only one person that could have done that, and that is Paul Heyman. So he goes on the chase. Paul Heyman climbs back in the ring, walks into a steel chair to the ribs uh, from the big show, and a shot to the back, followed by a choke slam on the chair. Big show gets rid of the evidence. One, two, three, as Mike Kyoda climbs back in the ring. And we have a new WWE Champion. Very short match. Did exactly what it needed to do. Um, can't say I really enjoyed it. Doesn't mean it wasn't a good match though. Um, so I'm going to go middling on this one. Fair to middling. I'm going to go two and a half cheap shots out of five. Um, with the two referee bumps and the interference from Paul Heyman. Did take away from it a little bit. Um, get the feeling that possibly Big Show's working hurt at this point in time. Um, I'm not sure whether the other injuries are works or not because they were like they were proper ripping into each other throughout the build up to this match. So yeah, two and a half cheap shots out of five and plenty of replays later as Taz and Michael Cole talk about what went off just to fill in the gaps because they probably didn't realise it was going to go that short. Um yeah, we move on to the next match. And it's time for the penultimate match, which is the Tag Team Elimination match for the WWE Tag Team Championships. It is the champions, Rey Mysterio and Edge, versus Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit, the first champions for SmackDown. And the Guerreros, all three of these teams have had on really good feud, uh, triangular feud, if you like, uh, with Guerreros interjecting themselves into the business of Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit with the history behind Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero. And obviously uh, Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit, they've always had history as well. Um, obviously Edge joined in with Rey Mysterio they were the finalists for the tournament the losing on the losing side was Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle picked up the victory so this has huge implications and this could be the third tag team to hold these championships in a very short space of time and of course, the Guerreros made sure that um, the the Guerreros made sure that Mysterio and Chris Benoit were the you know came out on top in their match for the championships. So um, we get down to it. It is an elimination tag team match. It is. Um, a three-way so basically three people are in the ring all at once um it is the exact way you would see a triple threat match 
but this is an elimination. So if your one of your team members get pinned, you go to the back and you're you've got less well, you've got no chance of being champion at this point in time. So it's a very unique match in that respect, in, in the respect that a lot of the triple threat tag team matches that I've seen there's only two people in the ring at the same time. In here, there's three. So it is a true traditional triple threat. Um, obviously, that breaks down really quickly <laughs> because, you know, you've got all these elements involved and there is no disqualifications in a triple threat match as well. So they take full advantage of that. Um, Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit get eliminated first after some deception. Uh, uh, Guerrero hits Angle, sorry, it hits. Yeah, he, he hits Chris Benoit in the back with the title. I had to think about it then. Uh, and then throws the uh, championship to uh, Kurt Angle as both of them had finishing moves on. Edge and Rey Mysterio, I believe. So, um, yeah, looks like Chris Benoit gets up. Looks like Kurt Angle has busted him in the back. He didn't, obviously. It was classic Eddie Guerrero, Eddie, classic Guerrero move. Although this is the this is Charvo doing this um, classic move uh, that causes deception in the ranks again. And uh, it leads to their elimination. Um, Edge and Mysterio eliminate Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit. They fight towards the back. We're down to two teams. Um, so this is where things get, they pick up a little bit. You've got the two teams. There's, there's no tagging. Um, I'm just going to say that now. There is no tagging. It's very much Lucha Rules. Um, it's it's very much a free for all, and they probably should have just had had it like that in the first place anyway. But they already had the tag team elimination match earlier uh, in the night with the tables. So um, two in one night, lots of lots of different things going off. But it would be the Guerreros picking up the victory here uh, with the lasso from El Paso from. Eddie Guerrero to Edge as Mysterio battles Chavo Guerrero on the outside uh, trying to get in to save his tag team partner Guerrero, uh, Chavo rather, uh, stopping him from doing that and yeah, get a traditional win, uh, a submission win. I love the lasso from El Paso, it's a version of, it's basically a high angle sharpshooter basically. Um, really, really good move. Love that move. Um, and well deserved by the Guerreros. I love the Guerreros as well, especially around this time. Um, more so when they went a bit more face and they started coming out in the uh, in the low riders and stuff like that, and, and went a bit more uh, face team rather than heel team because then their antics just got over with the crowd, and it's crazy because it's basically cheating, but people loved it and it was alluded to in the song lie cheat and steal so this is exactly what they did they lied they cheated and they stole the championships from edge and Rey mysterio truly deserved really good match the triple threat rules were a bit disjointed at times but really good match um i'm going to give this one four cheap shots out of five um, just because of how crazy it was in terms of uh, the setup and and being sandwiched in between lots of other matches with stipulations, I suppose the idea of survival. Um, one notable thing I actually have remembered about this pay per view is that there are no traditional elimination ch uh, traditional elimination chamber matches, uh, traditional fight survivor series elimination matches because of the other stipulations that are there they don't always have to have them five on five uh, i really like those kind of matches but there's got to be some reason behind it um so yes truly groundbreaking as a pay-per-view um in terms of that we move on to the next match 
And before we head to the final match, the match that everyone's come to see, the Elimination Chamber, we get Christopher Nowinski, the winner of the Tough Enough competition for that year, 2002. He comes out to his Harvard music, his Harvard fight music, says that he is different to New Yorkers because he, they consider themselves street smart. He is intelligent because he is the only Harvard graduate in the arena. Now, I don't know what possessed him to say that because, I mean, there could be plenty of Harvard graduates in that particular arena, arena at that time. Anyway, um, he's got the microphone, so yeah, he's telling, he's telling his story. So he says that uh, New Yorkers are, in fact, stupid. Um, yes. <laughs> Matt Hardy comes out, everyone's cheering, woo, 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 woo. Um, <clears throat> and he says, I'm, I'm here to tell you that you're wrong about New Yorkers. They are not stupid. They are losers. And that is massive, massively different. So they come to the conclusion that New Yorkers are lupid. I'm sure this was done to fill time. And to introduce the next person. Holler if you hear me. The siren goes. And it is Big Papa Pump. Scott Steiner walking into Madison Square Garden. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, he comes in. He gets dressed down. Hits the Steiner line. He's very, very stiff, by the way. Steiner line, suplexes, clears the ring. Everyone cheers. Everyone shouts, chants for Steiner. And we go away happy. We next get the package, of course, for the Elimination Chamber. And uh, obviously the Always song by Saliva again. Before we go into the match, and Chris Jericho makes his way out first. Sung to the ring by Saliva, live from the world in New York. Um, because he has a song at this point, which is King of My World. Good song. Um, probably the only saliva song I'll ever, I'll ever, um, ever like, apart from Superstar, maybe. But that's just because it's a wrestling thing. Um, so he comes down to the ring first. Uh, we get Kane, Book T, and I know it's in there somewhere. Anyway, uh, Rob Van Dam, oh, Shawn Michaels. <laughs> of course, how could I forget Shawn Michaels? Um, making his way out fourth. Uh, we then get Rob Van Dam and Triple H, who start the match. Now, the rules of this match, you probably know by now, if you've seen an Elimination Chamber before, although the rules have changed ever so slightly as we've gone on throughout the years. Every five minutes, a pod will open and someone else will be released into the match. Eliminations can occur at any time. So, you know, if someone gets the quick jump on one of the others, the first two that start, they could be having a rest while the uh, rest of the time ticks down, much like it is as a Royal Rumble. It's very much Royal Rumble, it's War Games, etc, etc. Uh, it makes me wonder what they're going to do with the Elimination Chamber now. They're bringing War Games back into the into the fold in uh, Survivor Series. You know, 20 years after the first Elimination Chamber. Um, so, we go on. Rob Van Dam gets... An early start, he just he throws his body around in this cell. I mean, the structure is unforgiving. They have since put uh, made it taller. They've they've made it a bit safer for the superstars to to work in. They put pads down and stuff like that. It takes away a lot of what made it so interesting in the first place. But obviously, the uh, safety of the wrestlers is paramount um so yeah rob van dam chucking himself around chucking himself around 
um, gets uh, Triple H smacked into the chain. Triple H starts bleeding. Um, he uh, is, yeah, he, he is... <laughs> Is is busted open nice and early in this one, um, and Rob Van Dam up to the point where he jumps off, or tries to jump off the cage, uh, gives uh, Jericho the bird. Jericho grabs his foot and pulls him down, uh, and gives Triple H a chance to try and uh, come up uh, to stop him. Uh, Rob Van Dam makes manages to fight both of them off and Jericho falls inside the pod uh, he doesn't go for the jump in the end um, and uh, we get the next entrant into the match um, it is in fact I think it was Booker T I just watched the match I think it was Booker T it was in next uh, it could be Jericho I think it was Jericho actually yeah it was Jericho um, Booker T would yeah um but yeah they all pretty much get into the ring um there was some eliminations before that uh with booker t eliminating rob van dam uh, who would go out first and uh it would be a he rob van dam would be a victim of his own jumping around really uh because he would do a move booker t would hit the um the scissor kick and eliminate Rob Van Dam. Uh, basically, he missed a frog splash and then got eliminated quickly in succession to that. Jericho eliminates Booker T with the lion salt and he also eliminates Kane the same way um, after a pedigree and a super kick. Um, so we're left down to Shawn Michaels now. Uh, who who came into the chamber last, um, and he eliminates Chris Jericho with a massive super kick to a rupturous, just an explosion of noise, uh, and then we come down to the two participants that are possibly the very reason that this match is happening: Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Obviously, at the end of SummerSlam, you saw Shawn Michaels a crumpled mess after Triple H lost to him and hit him with a sledgehammer in the spine. I can't remember that bit. I still can't remember the order of the elimination chamber. That's terrible. That's that's terrible. Terrible, terrible. Anyway, um, I think I was just so engrossed in the match and watching it again. Uh, popping for every move and it's been a long time since I've actually popped for anything uh, in wrestling uh, unless it's so, you know one of my friends who, who's in a match or whatever um, owing to the fact that I will keep dropping this in owing to the fact that I am training to be a wrestler myself so um, really appreciate what these guys put themselves through but uh, Triple H would eventually get the upper hand with a pedigree it would be a very close count as Shawn Michaels would kick out he would then jump up and uh, well kick kip up actually and hit the hit a massive super kick one that he got even louder than the last one as he falls on top of Triple H and gets the three you have a new world champion in WWE on Raw and that is Shawn Michaels heartbreak kid himself Mr. Main Event Shawn Michaels in his poop brown tights because he didn't have time to get them done up properly uh, and it just ended up being just a H on the back of his trunks and uh, yeah <laughs> He uh, he won the title, um, very deservingly so. And that is the end of your match. Uh, redemption for everything that Triple H has done, done to him. Uh, redemption for everything Chris Jericho had done to him. Obviously, that feud would would move on as well. Um, and the Triple H Shawn Michaels feud wouldn't be over just yet. 
So, <laughs> that is Survivor Series 2002. I think probably one of the best Survivor Series um, in modern history that I can think of. Um, that match was just excellent. Everything that I'd, you know, everything they put on the line and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give this a perfect score. It was five out of five cheap shots for me. And I'm also going to give this the Big Boss seal of approval because it is just amazing. Uh, it was history making at the time and we still have the match going strong now. It has its own pay-per-view. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's just amazing, this pay-per-view. Uh, there are some down points, like say the women's um, hardcore match, really good match, but the fact that they had ironing boards and, and things like that under the ring just kind of took away from it, and it's a damn shame. Great pay-per-view. Probably the low point, although it was a match that did what it needed to do, was the Brock Lesnar and, and, um, and Big Show match because it was so quick um obviously the the lowest point was christopher newinski uh nothing against christopher newinski he just yeah he's just a bit mm, funny anyway we move on to the next pay-per-view which is uh as we speak it would be armageddon 2002 what a great pay-per-view um just a great year for for wrestling in general just brilliant um and that's on december the 15th so join us back here for that and uh yeah we get a three stages of hell match in that uh that particular show so yeah let's do it hope you've enjoyed the pay-per-view review the retro review and uh, I will see you next time. You're the Cheap Shot Nation. I'm your host, Luke. Thank you very much for listening to my ramblings and indulging me in trying to get you to go back and watch some classic pay-per-views. I will see you next time on the December the 15th. Goodbye. <laughs>